Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and I am so excited to introduce my amazing guest to you today. Her name is Vicki Fairchild, and stay tuned because she is a channeler. She has channeled an entire book, you guys, from the Ascended Masters, from the Ascended Master realm. And it is amazing. I have been digging in all week, and she also is going to be channeling some messages today during this episode. So make sure you stay tuned in. And you guys, thank you so much for subscribing to this community. I have noticed it growing and growing. If you're interested in psychics, channelers, people who are spiritual teachers like Vicki, and she's a healer as well. And that's what today's episode is going to be all about is self healing. Vicki teaches people how to heal their mind, body and spirit. So you guys, um, without further ado, Welcome, Vicki. How are you today? I am great, Mary Beth. I want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with you. You are pure delight. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm so happy that Robin introduced us. Let's give a shout out to Robin because, okay. man, I mean, that was that was random. I almost didn't go to the Victory of Light, which is now called Body, Mind, Spirit Expo. I almost didn't go, but something made me go. And then that's where I met Robin. And then she, I, I brought up my podcast for whatever reason to her, first time meeting her, and then she told me all about you. That was great. Well, so, I'm really honored to be here, so it's it's a special time. I'm so glad we met, and I'm so glad that you came over and brought me this book. Um, I have been really reading it this this week. You know, it was the first time I had a chance to read because you just brought it over for me, and I'm so impressed at first i'm like highlighting and highlighting and hi well we need to talk about that and then next thing you know I'm, i've got everything highlighted because it's just one wonderful nugget after another <laughs> it just never ends it's just truth it's truth and it reminds me of the spiritual transform the transformative experience that i had when i was only 18 the downloads that i got are are, are truth is truth right and that is why i was just I could see why your book awakens people. Like you mentioned that to me when you were over here at my house, how people have that ex an experience, an awakening experience just by reading your book. So I'm gonna have you tell me all about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and read your short bio so people know you a little bit about your background and then we'll dig into this, we'll dig into this book a little bit more to get started. Okay, guys. So Vicki Fairchild has been a spiritual seeker all of her life. She is a medium, mystic, healer certified holistic health and transformational life coach and an ordained minister of the magdalene she is the creator of love living the oneness of your vibrant essence which incorporates inspired intuitive healing and spiritual and somatic embodiment practices she has been gifted with the innate ability to bring through divine messages to help with the evolution of the personal and collective consciousness she is a master in the movement arts and has also owned and operated her own physical therapy clinic for over 30 years pioneering holistic health and wellness vicky is the author of the divine trilogy the story of union through the teachings of the masters and this is channeled through the christ consciousness and the ascended master realm which is the book that i've been reading this week Vicki is best known for her expansive, intuitive healing abilities, and she is honored to be of service to a wide range of individuals. She provides transformational opportunities through individual coaching, readings, sacred circles, and groups. She is available as a minister for sacred ceremonies, weddings, and individual and group spiritual guidance. So what a perfect guest to have on the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. That is like all about you. Robin was right to introduce us. So... I got to ask, so how did you come to write this book? Like, how did you start channeling from Jesus and Mary Magdalene and Sarah? It was an amazing, um, it was an amazing moment. So I've always been intuitive and heard things. And I started with automatic writing many, many years ago, probably in my early 20s. And um, in fact, a friend of mine said, you know what? you know, what you're telling me, what you're channeling for me is from, you know, sounds like the Bible. And I said, well, I never read the Bible. I don't know anything about that. And he said, but the wording of it, it sounds like Jesus. And then I said, well, that's probably it. 
But anyway, so then I, I, um, I studied a system called craniosacral work uh, through the Upledger Institute, which is part of the healing work that I do. And I was there with him and there was like 10 of us. So it was the, this advanced course. And John Upledger like came over and, and he said, I have to ask you, all these people here are having Jesus experiences. And he said, I'm, I'm Jewish and I don't get it. <laughs> so my friend that who I had met some years ago in some other course where she goes, oh, it's her. She, he's always with her. That And so everybody was perceiving that. So, you know, it's, it's like being a fish in the water. The fish doesn't know it's in water. It's always in water, right? So yeah. I just, he's always been with me. But this particular time, I went to see um, John of God, Medium Juan. So he had he had originally um, come to America the first time he came. So I had been to South America, and then I came, then he was here. So I'm the way they had that all set up. There was this big meditation hall. So I'm sitting in the meditation hall. And I feel this presence, this huge, huge presence come. And I heard, will you write the book for me? And I said, well, that depends on who you are. Because just because you're on the other side doesn't mean that, that I can trust you. So, I, you know, when you're open to spiritual, the realm like that, I'm really kind of uh, aware of who I'm talking to all the time. And um, so when I felt that, I said, he said, um, and it was a male presence. He goes, you know me. Um, I said, can you give me a sign? He said, yes, I will give you a sign. Watch for me. So when you get to medium Juan, look for me in his eyes. So I waited and I kept hearing that phrase over and over again, write the book for me. So by the time I got to him, there was actually a TV camera and everything there. So I'm standing there for quite a long time and they're interviewing him. And this guy is a trans channeler and there's a lot written about him. That's another story. But Are you talking about John of God? Yep. Yes, I'm familiar. So <laughs> but I'm familiar yeah. with the other story too. Yeah. So, so am I. Yeah. But I got to tell you that in the beginning of his trans channeling, the Christ consciousness was surrounding him. I checked it. Absolutely. In. He then, healed Dr. Wayne Dyer. All that. Years later, I went with some friends and I told them we have to leave. I said, there's something different here. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. So we ended up leaving pretty early. But that particular time, um, it was pure. So when I got to him, his eyes changed colors. And then Jesus appeared in like this, um, it was a, like a halo of light, you know, like it's, it was this huge, huge presence. And he said, you know me. He said, I can't stay in his body long, but I want you to touch me. That still makes me cry. But anyway, so I did that. I reached out and I held his hands and this energy popped through me. And he said, will you write the book for me? He said, of course I will, whatever it is. So I went back and I got very emotional and I started writing immediately, you know, and then there was this download of just all this information. And then there was a moment where he said to me, I want you, I want to introduce you to your entourage. And this entourage is going to help you get the book out there and other things. And so he came to me at a later time, actually. And he, they, there was this like group of, of energies that lined up like a V and he started naming these people. So he said, here's Mary Magdalene. And then he started naming and my friend was actually with me. And I said, who is Thaddeus? He goes, Thaddeus, Vicky. He is naming his apostles. So he named his apostles. I felt them and I met each one. There was like a, it was like getting to know you. Right? <laughs> and, uh, but the last one in particular was Judas. And I felt like like a brush on my leg almost. And I saw this image of him like he was standing right next to me. He said, sister, we, we know each other. You know me. And I said, yeah, I do. I know all of you. And um, when Mary Magdalene really came, it it was a stream of consciousness so big that there would be times when I would write, I'd have to pause and she would give me um, all this other information. So I have a whole nother volume of personal information and a whole nother book she gave me that I haven't put out yet. 
But when she was going, when she was, when she was telling me this book, she wanted to tell her story of her life with him. Mm -hmm. She wanted to talk to me about him as a teacher, as healer, as master, and as lover. Mm -hmm. as the, That's where as people are going to be like, what? Lover? As, as the beloved. There's a, there's a part in the book where she's describing this tantric union. And tantra has, has had a bad name in yoga. I'm a yoga teacher, so I've studied yoga for the last 40 plus years. All kinds of yoga. And, um, but true tantric union is union with the beloved. It's your inner lover. It's your inner um, master, if you will. So the divine comes to us in whatever form we need. And I've heard that from Jesus a lot of times. He'll say, I'll come to you in any, any form you need. Do you need a friend? Do you need a lover? Do you need a brother? Do you need a sister? Do you need a mother? Do you need a father? The divine, the supreme is formless, but takes form in the energy and the essence of each individual person and what they're ready to receive and how they're ready to receive it. It's absolutely brilliant. So Mary Magdalene is this amazing, loving, compassionate stream of consciousness, but she's big. She's big. The, the energy is very, very big, right? And so I, Robin and I met her through this Magdalene process. And I met a woman that has taught, I don't know, women for years and years, Anya McAndrews, and she's she's amazing. But when she met, she read the book. She, she wanted me to, so I presented that with her and she said, you know, um, I think you're a living Magdalene. And I said, what do you mean by that? I mean, she's been with, with uh, Flo Magdalena who wrote, you know, I Remember Union. And by the way, that book, when I first got this, I was, I was later at this um, retreat and I said, how am I going to publish this? And they said, well, look at that book over there, right? And so I went to the book and it literally moved off the shelf. And that was Flo's book. And they said, look, open it up. I opened it up and there it was. She was talking about how Jesus came and said, will you write the book for me? And they said, you, you need to self-publish it. And that's a whole nother story, how I came to the graphics and everything. They have, they have given me the way every step of the way. So when I'm in, when I was in this, I felt like I was her. Like, am I Mary Magdalene? Am I the reincarnation? And then there's all these other people that think they're the reincarnation of Mary Magdalene. Like, how does all that work? So I was thrilled to meet Anya, who is very wise. And she said, well, Ma Magdalene, the Magdalene is a title. And the Magdalene is a very, very big soul. So there's, she said, there's a handful of people on the planet that are um, her living legacy. Wow. And, and, and she said, you're one of them. You, and every different people are getting different parts of her story, right? This story was as all about love yes. all about love and so they used jesus and mary's story as, as the ultimate the greatest love i've ever known mm -hmm. it's the biggest love story is our relationship with the supreme as we know it to be and that's the the book that i'm still reading is book one of this trilogy there's all three are in this uh the same book but i'm i'm still in book one and i think that it's so relatable to to women in general how um she was so just jaded almost and bitter about men and and all and all the things like she didn't really know a true love until she met jesus right and i just think it's so relatable in that way and 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 just the the way that he's, you know, opened her eyes almost instantly, by the way, because she could feel it. She could feel the, the energy, you know, that that energy was an instant, almost instant love. And she was a high priestess in her own right. Mm -hmm. so, uh, at some level, she she had a magnitude and and I believe they were twin flames. They were soulmates, you know, and they had an agreement like we're going to come down and do this thing. So the book is talking about her begging him, like, don't go through with it. You can change this. 
And um, there's a wisdom in how all of our lives unfold, how our dharma or our karma plays out. Mm -hmm. And for them, they had this huge story, a huge mission, which I, I believe in what I've gotten is to open up the heart of humanity. Mm. And that catapulted, that story really was a memorable story, was it not? And so every every year, you know, uh, certain people, we, we honor this holy season and everybody has all these different traditions and it's still going back to the sacred heart that lives within each of us. And they said, you know, when you talk about Christ consciousness, you got to know that Jesus was the man, Mary was the man, but the Christ consciousness is where their souls ascended to. And it's from which we can all uh, tap into, if you will, and become this living legacy for love itself. And when they said love, um, there's a very specific way they define love it's not like this human emotional um you do for me i do for you you know kind of love it's it's that it's the vast unconditional kind that is a a field it's a it's the substance love is like literally this this substance that we're in all the time like a so frequency it's a frequency and so when you learn to clear the chit as they we would say it in yoga or the chit chatter the monkey mind when that starts to to stop you'll start to feel this other awareness and this and this presence that is always there absolutely and i want to circle back to ascended masters just yeah. for my viewers who might be new and might be like what does that even mean what is an ascended master the interesting thing is they talked about themselves to me as as master the master realm. So the ascended master in yoga, it's called samadhi. So if you are really able to relax all of your ego and you become one with in union with the the supreme, you are a master. You have mastered this humanity. You have you have mastered your journey here. You know, you've awakened inside the dream. So the ascended masters are people that have walked the earth. Okay. They have walked here. So they know the pitfalls of being human, right? And so one night in particular, I have this group that I'm with on Thursday night, and we've gotten all this amazing new information and downloads. But one of the th nights I remember they're coming and they, they said, we want to introduce ourselves. We're the seven original masters from the yoga realm. And, and they were like, like they were laid out. Right. And so part of that, when, like when, when the apostles left, that was a very dramatic time, you know, so somebody killed themselves. Another one went, you know, it was a horrible time for them, but at the point of their, when they left their bodies, they the one cool thing, and Judas has talked to me about that, was he said, I went, I knew I was going back home to meet meet the, meet my master. And that's what they called him was the master. Mm -hmm. So what I have heard from them is like he literally came on a specific mission. When he ascended, when he literally, when he left his body, he, he made a trail with his light that was so bright. He literally paved the pathway through all these realms. Be before that, you could get, I didn't know this, but you could get kind of stuck on, in the journey home when you, when you die, right? Cool. I didn't know that either. Well, I don't want to get stuck in some crazy place. Limbo. <laughs> yeah. So he kind of blazed this light and he, he entered this master realm from which he has assembled a, other um, beings, light beings, if you will, and energies from different realms, which I've started getting to know as well, because he, his mission is to save this planet, to awaken humanity to the truth of who they are, and to literally begin to value all life as sacred. The most That's fascinating it. thing, Vicki, is that you didn't read the Bible, you didn't study the Bible, yet you were able to channel a book with all the I don't know if characters is the right word, but characters of the Bible. Like, how do you explain that? That's amazing. Like, I don't know how I explain 
I didn't know how to explain it when it was coming to me. And my partner at the time was saying, you know, he said, Vic, like, this is like sacrilegious. You know, they got married. They had a kid. You know, this was be this was before the Internet. OK, so I didn't have any information about anybody else that was channeling Mary Magdalene. And, and to tell you the truth, I never read any other book because I wanted to remain a, 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 a pure channel. I didn't want to get tainted by anybody else's stories. So there's been years that I have just been steeped in meditation and writing and writing and writing. And they have given me volumes of things to share, actually. When you said this was before the internet, when, what year was this that you channeled this book? I think it came out in 2006, okay. but, but it might've been like 10 years. I mean, this was this process i'm not really good with time you'll find that i'm kind of same i, I, mean, I think that's a spiritual time. people thing i have no <laughs> concept of different. time whatsoever yeah i have trouble with time sometimes but but it's like it was um maybe about 10 years even so i have a really good friend and when i got this done literally my pen stopped and i went that's it i'm, I'm listening they're like that's it but there will be more so there's a message at the end of that. So I sent it to my really good friend who's been on the spiritual path and she's a wise woman. And I said, Marilyn, I, I need you to read this and tell me if it's the real deal. She read it in a night, a night. She just- What? Yeah, she could, she read this thing in a night. She just went, and she got it all. She downloaded, she goes, it's the real deal. I sent it to another friend of mine. I, I probably, you know, I wanted to, um, I didn't want anybody to edit it. So I edited it myself. I read it seven times. I sent it to my friend who's who's boy genius, Jim. I said, Jim, you're the final edit. And he said, I can't get through it, Vic. I can't edit it. I, I'm 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 in the middle of it. I think you should just go for it. So just get it out there. But um that that was everybody that read it was having these really powerful experiences. So they told me. So I had this manuscript, you know, and, and the weird thing, I got to tell you this. So I don't think I have it here, but I hand wrote the whole thing. There wasn't, oh my. I wrote the whole thing. I had people help me type it. I had to dictate it on these old machines. And so it isn't like I sat at my computer and wrote this. That's what took so long. Are you sure and, it wasn't earlier than 2006 then? It might've been the nineties. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I said it was about 10 years before. Oh, 10 I years ago. In 2006, right? Gotcha, gotcha. So then I had these friends trying, well, I can't read your writing. And then I had to read it. And so it was a big deal just getting it in this typed tra transcript form. So then they said, okay, now. So so I did that. And then they did this download kind of, of an energy. They said, now we're going to steep it in the Christ consciousness. This is the, how all great manuals have ever been given out. They were passed down from teacher to student. And then the essence of God is put in the manual. That's a true great mystical teaching. The energy is in it. And they said, now you can send it. And that's how I sent it off. Finally. It reminds me of um, other channeled books. I think a, a lot of books are channeled, by the way. People just don't realize that they don't realize they're, we're always getting downloads. Just what are you tuned into? Are you getting downloads from high frequency or low frequency? But um, it reminds me of conversations with God, you know, type energy and a course in miracles type energy, which I, I've read conversations with God, all of the books, but um, I'm still working on a course in Mir miracles, which was written by a Jewish woman, but it, it's a Christian book through the eyes of Christ, right? The Jesus was kind of trying to, um, from what I understand, correct it's correct things that were in the Bible that were kind of misinterpreted, adding things that were removed, like the the lie of separation, for instance. You know yeah. that we're actually all connected. We're actually all directly connected to God. Um, or what? Do you, what did you call God? The supreme. I loved it. What, what did you call it before we were I, recording? I, I, yes, I. You know, if, in teaching yoga, I have people of different faiths. So I call it the Supreme. The Supreme. Oh, just the Supreme. Okay. I thought it was longer. Yeah. Um, I love it. I, I say source energy a lot because there are a lot of people are angry with God. And so there's bad associations. So source energy um, is the one that I most use because also there are different 
face. Like you said, when I'm like on social media, you, I, we all have the same right. one, <laughs> the one. My girlfriend, my girlfriend was saying to me, she was talking about God. And, and I said, I don't know, why are you using the word God? She goes, Vic, it's all in your book. I went back and I went, Oh yeah, that's right. I remember having a conversation. I said, I don't want to associate God as with the patriarchy. Mm. You know, I have a bad experience with, with that patriarchal thing. And I, you know, cause I grew, I was a feminist and, you know, like I'm into the goddess thing. And then they gave me a whole dissertation about that one time. The reason we use that is because God is the great I am. That's another way. There you go. The great I am. Yeah. And anytime that I, I have, you know, channels and psychics and, and anytime someone's come in on, on my show, but anytime someone's come in contact, that's usually the way that I am introduces themselves. I am <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> so this episode is called, you know, how to heal yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And I love that your guides, you did some automatic writing this morning. You, okay. uh, you asked for guidance on what does this, the viewers of this show, what do they need to hear the most collectively? And you took some notes and I have them here and thank you so much for sending. Um, did you want me to ask you some questions or do you just wanna kind of go with the flow of what you felt when- Ask a question, ask a, yeah, what's of, what's of interest? What do you find of interest there? I, I can go off on anything. The whole, the, the whole thing is interesting. So yeah. I think something that you talked about too before we were recording is you were saying like, in order to self heal, we also need, it's not only about ourself. Go ahead and talk about that further. So there's different aspects of, of healing when you think about healing. Healing is to me is when something's been out of balance, injured, strained in some way, and you have to restore it back to its more quote, original um, way of being and, and bring more harmony and balance back into the whole system. The body itself has an intelligence and I have been in touch with this intelligence um, so I'm going to speak to it in, in a way that uh, um, actually came through me a bit. If you think about it, I think of it as you have three levels of intuitive knowing. Let's start with the gut, your gut. Now we're learning a lot about the gut brain balance. You know, everybody's talking about this. Yes. Now. But the gut is your survival. It's your instinct. It's primal. It's animal. It's your lower and it's associated with your lower brain. The next level of intu intuitive healing you can tap into is your heart. This is your emotions, your feelings. And if you dig deeper into that, you will come into the sacred heart. And this is where all the healing really takes place. Okay. Now, you also have this, this higher brain, this uh, third eye center, or the sixth chakra, if you will, that illuminates your pineal gland and each chakra has a gland associated with it but the pineal gland when that really opens and people talk about having kundalini experiences but it's really when it, the pineal gland lights up and you're in the mind of god if you will let's just use that for now so you're in the great mind now once you tap into the great mind you got access to infinite resource infinite knowing and you can pull things in that you really that you really need. So the powerful thing that came through me today was something near and dear to my heart, which is, and I'll quote it, to heal yourself, you must also help heal the planet mm -hmm. and change your throwaway lifestyle. All life is sacred and the balance of the planet must be restored. Each and every person has unique unique strengths and gifts that they brought to use and to contribute. And now is a crucial time for each and every person that is halfway awake, that isn't awake, to step up and do something that yes. is gonna heal this planet from the water we drink, to the air we breathe, to the food we have, the soil is depleted. I mean, let's admit it, it's a hot mess. Yes. And so without that, you know, we, we can't heal the cellular level. Our cellular level vibrates at a level 
of the supreme that created us all, however you want to look at that. And that supreme energy is in the food. It's in, it's everywhere. You can't, you can't escape it. You, you cannot be aware of it, but you can't escape it. The toxins you mean, like the toxins in our food and yeah, oh, you can't it's, escape. Not, it's not a vibrational match to who we really are in our DNA is. So healing is all vibration, right? Mm -hmm. And you just, you're, you know, you're, you're brilliant. So the vibratory state of the cells, the atoms, I mean, quantum physics, there's a lot of teachers out there talking about how you can heal your body by up in the vibration and the frequency. There's a story in the book where Jesus talked about a man who came to him and he said his feet hurt, this hurt, that hurt. And Jesus said to him, I can heal you, but it's going to be your shift of consciousness that keeps you healed. Oh, that's so true because you could be healed and then go it, back to the, the same old, yep, the same thoughts. So you think the same thoughts, the same beliefs mm -hmm. that lead to your actions, all of that. If you're eating the same food, drinking the same <laughs> alcohol and disconnection, it's a disconnect. So we have lost, a, we've become disconnected because we're not in our true nature. So nature is fundamental. We need to feel a sense of belonging. Being in beauty is fundamental to healing. You have to be surrounded by beauty. It's the essence of what we begin it. And let's talk about great mother. You know, the and in yoga, you would talk about form as, as more feminine and the formless is more masculine. That's another way to talk about the, the union. But the truth is we have to come back to balance. And part of it is the collective consciousness, if you're plugged in to the news all the time, you know, it, it, it affects your field, it affects your vision. And you start to get skeptical whether there's any help for the planet at all. So to be truly healed, you have to keep your eye on the light, keep your inner eye focused on what you want to experience. And that what they said is that it brings you to this point where you'll come in contact with your inner witness, your mm -hmm. inner teacher, the inner knower, that source. And I call it a profound neutral. It's like where you come to a point of stillness and there is everything there for you. It's not moving. It's just profound neutral. So when you learn to do that, you can ask your body intelligence anything. So I studied a system called body mind centering that originated with Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen. And what Bonnie, Bonnie was like me, we were, pro were probably in the top 1% of feeler types. You know, a lot of people, I'm just a kinesthetic learner. I feel everything. I'm an empath and all that. Yeah. And so, she, so we would enter a room together and she would start to move and everybody would want her to say something and she would just start to move. And then I would just join her in movement. And before you know it, we're in the state of consciousness together where we don't need words at all. <laughs> it's the intelligence of the body from cerebral spinal fluid to muscles, to fascia, to bone, to all of that has a specific purpose. The organ mind is different, the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm anatomy geek, right? So I all of this though comes together with an intelligence. Yes. And that intelligence is what heals you because that intelligence is part of the great mind. It's right. It's like your chat. If you give yourself the time to reconnect, like you said, going out in nature, or I think what we've really lost is playing. Like, no, everyone's so serious now. We don't play anymore. And I think the vibration of play is so important. And, to, you know, and laughter, like it's just, you know, like getting back to kind of our childlike ways, I think would be helpful for everyone in healing. And like you mentioned earlier, a very practical tip if you're sick, if you have autoimmune or you're trying to heal like from cancer in, in anything that could be ailing you don't watch the news you know the news <laughs> is the worst thing like how are you going to be at peace or neutral the word you used and i've heard neutrality is is like unconditional love is actually neutral and a neutral is it, it doesn't seem right but it is and that just if you're watching things that are divisive if you're focusing on political things that is the 3d 
and we're moving into 5D. You know, we're, 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 we're getting away from the fear-based stuff. And I think a lot of people have gotten caught up in things that are, that are fear-based. And, and, and I, you know, I understand there's a lot of truth in conspiracy theories. I, there, there's always truth sprinkled in. That's how they get started. But when we start to focus on that and spread fear, we're actually working for the lower frequencies at that point. And we're doing the exact opposite of what we're trying to do when we wake people up. The, we're trying to move into ascend, if you will, <laughs> into love and 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 get rid of that illusion of separation. And so I think it's funny that people who are, think they're waking people up are actually putting them back to sleep. That's just my opinion. That's just my two cents. Oh, I, I don't know if you that. agree. <laughs> well, I think you're absolutely right. And I wanted to say something about this joy factor. And um I'm just going to bring Ama into the picture. So I've been blessed with being with some really great beings of light. Yes. She's God realized. She's the real deal. She's the highest, to me, the highest energy on the planet. And uh, she came to me and told me uh, that I needed to go receive her darshan. That was before the internet. That was before cell phones. And a friend came over and said, Ama came to me in meditation, said, you need to go be with her. You know, so that it's been amazing with her. She comes through me and heals people just like Jesus comes through me and helps heal people too. But one of the things that Alma says is that love is her religion, number one. And two, our true nature is joy. And if you yes. want to know the true nature of the divine, then be like a child again. Yes. And I have a picture of Alma. She's looking at me right now. Thanks to you, because when you came over, you were looking at some stuff that I inherited from my mom. Uh, when she died, I have all this stuff. And, and you're like, do you know who this is? This is Ama. And I had no idea. And you're like, bring this upstairs. It needs to be in your <laughs> where you work. And then I also have the abundance picture as well that like, I had no idea what some of the stuff was. And you're like, well, let me tell you, <laughs> you need that upstairs. <laughs> and you bet. And she's, she embodies divine mother. That, and, and everybody I, needs that divine mother energy. You know, that's where we come from. We come from this loving mother. Every mother wants her child to thrive and to be happy and to be joy-filled and have a great life. What mother doesn't want that for, for their child? So I feel like that feminine energy is upon us, if you will, and as the um, structures of the patriarchy start to come down, you'll feel a rising of the feminine because the feminine is this all like hell. It's like the ultimate compassion, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah? And so my big thing is saving the animals. That's my, my thing. Oh, ending, I'm an animal lover too. Ending cruelty. They're the most precious, innocent, Thing on this planet this is their planet by the way you know i'm just visiting here but this is their realm and i want to do everything we can to not do any harm and in yoga we call it ahimsa but it's called do no harm not to yourself not to the planet not to others with and thought word or deed and that's the old golden rule and it's it's been said in different ways but it really just comes back to loving yourself enough to take time Mm -hmm. precious time to take good care of yourself and to be aware like your choices this sustainability thing is going to be a really big deal and i feel like all life matters down to the minute to the to the earthworm mammal, to, to the earthworm that everything has a purpose and the native people know this they've always known this yeah they got it right they, they got, got it right, it right. You know, so, so what so for people watching and who um do they are struggling with their health right now what are some practical tips that they could start right away like today um to really start to i know it's all energetic i agree with you all of the healing start, there's always a spiritual factor to any ailment that we end up having or disease disease that we end up um manifesting into physical form. So let's say it's already there. Like it's too late. We've got this ailment. What steps can I take first uh, on my road to recovery? The first thing I would look at with somebody is I check in with them and I'm coaching them on their lifestyle. 
I ask them specific questions like, what is your routine? The body loves a routine. So if you want to put in a meditation practice, chances are you should do it first thing because once you get in touch with your day, that's not going to happen. Right. How many glasses of water do you want to drink? Keep keep something there. Make sure you get, you know, enough water in. And that is huge. I mean, just that. And also start to question the source of your food. Where does your food come from? You know, is it some animal that's been cooped up its whole life and has never seen the light of day and is stuffed in a cage? Is that what you want to eat? You want to see a cow that's been, you know, literally they cry before they're they're executed. Uh, literally. The that big is, food industry is that's horrible. That's the absolute truth. Where does your food come from? Mm-hmm. And what is your exercise of your movement routine? So, and, and I tell people, what do you love to do? What could you do that you could stick with? Is it walking in nature? Do you like swimming? Do you like to play um, some kind of sport? Uh, I'm a dancer, so I have to dance or I'm not good to be around. You know, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> yoga, you know, yoga, um, breath work, pranayama, simple things that you can do. And the, and the thing is, I don't think we're meant to do it by ourselves. I think that you need to ask for help. And there are really good professionals out there. There's a lot of people. There are nurturers, healer types. We're all out there wanting to help. You know, that's me. Um, my husband's like, why don't you retire? I go, what would I do? What What is that? I mean, there are so many things that need to be done on this planet. Right. I, I signed up to help here. So I'm a helper healer type. Call me. I can help. I can give you some tips. And there's, um, I also feel like, um, this bond with nature is, is really important. If you look at how much uh, parking lots we run into, does everybody not feel better when they come back from the beach or a hike in the woods? I mean, so I feel like you have to get nature back in there and talk about relationships. Look at who you're with. Yeah. Do they feed your soul? Are they positive? Are they nice to be around? are they kind if the more you look at what's good for you really be honest with yourself who do you want to spend your time with you know who's to say the first top five people you hang with is what your energy looks like yeah. who, do you, who, do, who do you want to be with and I feel like community is important too you need friends on the journey so a lot of women don't feel comfortable in um women's circles, but I'm going to tell you, I just came from a circle that rocked my world. And it's what I was looking for. I wanted to meet people. I need to be in a room with people that get me, that can see me, that understand me, that I can talk about this stuff with. I have hid myself in my physical therapy practice for years, trying to make sure I please everybody and I don't offend anybody. But when people, when I'm there and I'm like, you know, I'm getting something, you mind if I can tell you what I'm getting here? And that, that, that rocks people's world. So who do you want to hang with? I think is important. Right. And it's, it's going to be funny when you read my, since we're both life coaches too, when you read my cards that I gave you, you listed, I have a card dedicated to everything that you said in there about like, and especially morning routine is huge. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's one of the first things that we, changed my life. Number one, you know, you can't just go to bed at random times and wake up at random times and you got to set yourself up for success every day. And, and it's kind of what you're reminding me of is we need to detox, not only our food and our, our water, our friendships, our, our relationships, it's, it's getting rid of toxins in all areas of our life, even emotional toxins. That's our true. thoughts, our thoughts, you know, and our thoughts lead to our beliefs. We, you know, Abraham Hicks said, a belief is just a thought you keep on thinking. And how true is that? Absolutely. And then you get triggered. And I see that's the whole thing. Own your triggers mm -hmm. and track them back. You go, oh, I just had a moment. Where did that, how, how old do I feel? Was that my six-year-old self? Was that my teenager self? Don't project on your friends, you know, like, right. own, own your, I'm big on that. Don't play victim, own your stuff and you can heal that stuff and you can get people to help you because we all have blind spots, right? right? Otherwise I would have been, you know, 
So Alma's like highlighting some of my some of my blind spots, you know. She asked me, you know, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, what is it that you want? Now my ego was gonna say, I need an income stream that's dependable. I need money. And Constant. then I, come on, you know. And then my soul pops in and goes, I just need you. Mm -hmm. I just want you. I want that stream of 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 uh connection all the time i don't want to feel disconnected from myself or my source right and we're always the ones to disconnect <laughs> source isn't disconnecting us we disconnect and it's our job to get back tuned back into that frequency it's always there we just can't hear things when we tune out and a lot of it's i think a lot of it's distractions we're just so distracted lately and like you said earlier, taking that quiet time to be out in nature and go for walks and, 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 and that's the way to reconnect. That's the way. And, and the journaling, you know, journaling, journaling is yeah. Great. It's just a simple thing. Like I do that in the morning. I go into my routines is I meditate, I, I journal, you know, I have a movement yoga practice, you know, but you have to budget time in for yourself. And I just want to say this to women. You know how we tr try to take care of everybody? Mm. You can't take care of anybody else until you put that oxygen mask on yourself. Making time for yourself is more than okay. It's it's crucial. And when you do that with for your children, you're teaching them how to how to self-care. You're teaching them how to manage how to be in the world, you know. Absolutely. In a loving, compassionate way for yourself. Yeah, when and people think it's not spiritual, self-care is the most spiritual thing you can do. And you can't like that saying you can't pour from an empty cup, you know, you, <laughs> how are you going to help other people if you don't take care of yourself first? It does. It's not selfish. It's actually going to uplift you. And then and only then are you in the position to uplift others. Absolutely. And and for the men out there, you know, like I come from a generation. My father was stoic and the primary purpose for him was to be a provider that is still there like this providing so if you're but it, I had so many people on my table years and years of it you know what children really want they want you they mm. want your time they want your love they want to be seen they need you to know that you have emotions too that you have a that your heart is there for them that there, it's not just a um, a physical providing but we're all in this together. And um, I think that men, um, it, we're getting, you know, it's different. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like spending time with the people you love is critical. Yeah, I, I have male clients who I help with relationships and that seems to be the, the theme is trying to learn that being a husband is, is more than being a provider, being a husband and father. You know, they think, well, I bring home the paycheck. But you also need to fulfill the spiritual needs, emotional needs of your wife. You just you're you're more than just a paycheck. You're <laughs> capable of much more. And I think even if it means making less money, that's okay. Like you said, the presence is more important than than a paycheck. Relationships are so much more. So I want to talk about a hug. That brings me to a hug, right? Yeah. So you know that the eleven second, what is it now? At least the eleven second hug, heart to heart. We oh. need more, we need heart to heart connection. And um, I ask people still, do you need a hug? Do you want a hug? It's like a basic need. And I see elders, you know, I've seen elders that live alone. And one of the things that I feel is critical is that people get body work or massage work or like the kind of work that I do or people that are doing energy work, but the hands-on thing, there's nothing like a pure loving touch that'll heal you. Mm -hmm. Like I can just put my hands on somebody and I'll go, oh. because when I touch, I'm tapped in. I'm tuned into my heart. I'm pouring my heart and my love out and connecting you to the love and heart, you know, there. Yeah. The touch is a very, um, I think, important thing when it's used correctly and um, well. Because in body, mind, centering, you know, um, there's a system I want to talk about. It's the cerebral spinal fluid. Mm -hmm. And it's housed in your brain and it uh, 
<clears throat> the production and reabsorption of it creates a rhythm that expands and condenses your body. It runs along your spine. And it uh, helps balance out the sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. But your cranial vault can get out of alignment because every bone in your head has a very specific way that it moves. Okay, I've studied this for like, I don't know, 30 something years. It was one of the original people in the city doing it. And it was magic. It's magic. Wow. That's why we call it. It's just magic because it feels like energy work, but it's specifically moving this. So there's so much that can be done up there. And what I've noticed is newborns. I just want to put this in there. Mothers, if you have a newborn, please see somebody like me that has this work because what happens is when you're in the womb, you can get in some predicaments right in positions mm -hmm. depending on if your c-section or the way you come out and all that stuff it really does change the position of your head and i have seen little newborns you know like preemies even where their little alignment is just off they're crying all the time they the physicians don't know what to do i put my hands and i i hook in soul to soul with them i go what do you need and they'll show me, they'll show me the trauma. I can see the trauma, what happened in the birth. I can feel their emotion. And then I go inside of that and then I just hold them and their little bodies, they just move and they realign themselves. Stop wow. crying, everything is fine. They needed, is they needed a little assistance, a little bit of guidance, but yeah, their bodies are intelligent and their bodies are definitely connected. Way more, <laughs> as when, they're, when you're a baby, you're, you're connected and then we help these children lose their connection as we domesticate them. <laughs> but that, that, that particular modality, if you will, the, the, the craniosacral work, I think if I could do any one, one population anymore, I want to give these new souls in the best chance possible. So when you talk about that alignment, it's easy when you're young because your system's very fluid, but as we get older, it gets more quote rigid, less fluid. So yeah. there are ways of moving and tapping into that fluid movement that'll keep you young. So I'm, I kind of uh, call myself an alignment specialist for lack of a better word. I love but, it. But it's like alignment on all levels, right? And the mm -hmm. structural alignment is important because the nerves come out of your spine and they innervate organs. So if there's something out of alignment in your spine, you can get what's called a facilitated segment and that organ will keep firing and then it, beco it becomes overwhelmed and dysfunctional. Wow. So the health of the spine is real important. So the type of movement that you do you know, yoga, flexibility, strength, have a, have a practice that builds your strength. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a getting different, you know, I'm losing some muscle mass. So you have to eat right. You have to, have, I believe in supplements. I really do really good ones that are absorbable. Um, right. They're not all created equal. Are not created equal. And that's Check for bioavailability. I have, I have some that I, I, I really believe in, but I think that the, the, the structure, the building block, you know, whether it's collagen, but you need vitamin D, we need the sun. I'm a sun worshiper, you know, it makes me feel like superwoman, you know. So light is real important. And, and how many people are in these dark little cubicles? Have you, you know? heard of a Sperti vitamin D lamp? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I this, this one, this one's the only one by it's S P E R T I. Uh, my friend introduced me to it. It's the only one that's actually been tested that it actually works to raise vitamin D levels. So I went ahead and invested because, because we're in Cincinnati here. It's like so gloomy. It's going to be gloomy all week. And so I, I use that thing every day. It's only five to seven minutes a day. And you know, it does, you can immediately feel your mood shift. Seasonal affective disorder is for real. <laughs> it is for real. I can attest to that. Well, that's, well, I'm going to look that one up myself. I'm getting online and get one of those right away. Yeah, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. And like I said, there's a lot of fake ones out there that don't work, but this one has been tested um, with people before and they take their vitamin D blood test before and then after they've been using it a while and it's a huge difference. So, and the other ones, not so much. There's a, a don't buy one on Amazon guys. It's there, there's so many fake things out there. But I wanted to go back real quick when you were talking about Reiki, Reiki and you said, and when it's used correctly. The reason I wanna bring this up is because I've had 
more than one negative Reiki experiences where the person uh, didn't properly either protect themselves and they're just like, and actually, you know, at these expos and things, they're going one person to another. And I've actually felt worse after getting Reiki. And I think it's so important like that, you know, like I would get Reiki from you for sure, Vicki, but like to me, it's, I've been scared of it because I had more than one experiences where um, the energy exchange, like I was better off before the exchange. Does that make sense? And I think you got to find somebody who vibrates higher than you do. And also who knows how to um, protect, I call them spiritual STDs, <laughs> especially if they're doing like one person after another. And then they just, it's like, it's, do you know what I'm saying? Like there's a probably spiritual hygiene that needs to happen between energy sessions. Am I wrong about that? Well, you used the word Reiki. I didn't use the word Reiki. <clears throat> oh, I thought earlier you did. I said energy. Okay. So I'm not a Reiki master and I, oh, didn't, okay. I didn't do it for a reason. There's mm -hmm. reasons why I didn't do it. Okay. Um, I have tried my best to study and be with the highest vibrational beings that I know. Okay. And um, the thing with Reiki uses symbols. I know pe a lot of people that are Reiki and Reiki masters, they're usually very intuitive people. And here's the key. If you meld with somebody, you had better get back out. Mm. So John Upledger um, was who I studied with, with the cranial work. He's brilliant. He was a brilliant healer. He said, I asked him how he did it. He goes, well, I put energy bracelets on my wrist and I never let anything in through here. Mm. When I touch, if I want to be crystal clear with my touch, I'm going to be in the bones. It'll ground you, it'll root you. I never leave a session until I make sure they're grounded, rooted, fully present. They can drive. You know, you have to bring it back to the body level. If you, you know, I had somebody do a reading for me and she goes, why are you still touching people? You know, you could just go into a room and, and do, wave your hand, hands. And I said, well, Magic. Well, I could do that. I could do off the body. I can do stuff like that. But I have a physical therapy license. My, you know, my license is touch. You know, I'm licensed for that. I've been doing it for 46 years. I've seen a lot of stuff. And the way you touch is really an art. And it's really a science. And it's true. Now I'm talking about when you're in a, a situation like I stopped going to expos like that because I pick up. There's too much going on there. Yeah. I love Victor. I know, you know, and I've, I know people that had places there and stuff but I come out of there real imbalance there's a lot of stuff in a room there so yes. I and a I, lot of desperate energy people who are there to be healed and yeah and uh, yeah I'm, uh, I'm, a, a, I'm an empath too home. when I leave and I've got to like do some major cleansing when I when I get when I get home yeah. I totally agree with you on that that's why I almost didn't go that's why you know I just stopped going with that and some people it doesn't affect them I just think some certain some of us are sensitive that way. Now, I know how to put up an energy field so I don't pick up stuff, but it gets in because in those places, there's too almost too much going on. My ritual when I'm done is I wash my hands. I'm a, you know, banshee hygiene person like that between people. So I just, I, I have a ritual I do. I yeah. have a ritual I do when, when, I, when I wash my hands. I have a mantra that that I do that uh, actually Ama gave me and um, and I do that and I'm crystal clear with my touch I think it's real important I have had not so good experiences I've had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of body work in my life from different people and I'm picky yeah that's what I was that was kind of my question I'm real picky, I'm real picky. how um, do you discern like I guess you just got to use your intuition and just trust that because I could tell you too, when I've had the bad experiences, I kind of knew and I did it anyway. And I didn't listen to that inner voice. So I think that's the answer. I think I answered my own question. That's how we discern is by actually listening to our intuition and not ignoring it. How about that's, that? That's what a novel clear, idea. And clear boundaries with you, clear boundaries. You know, you'll, you'll feel into when somebody doesn't have, have clear boundaries that they, they, they kind of merge with you. Like I can feel that right away you know mm -hmm. I, I've, I've called healers on it myself uh in particular you know i've called them on it oh out loud well mm -hmm. i said you're getting I a little if i have the little mushy there can you pull back just a little bit okay wow 
Um, and I love how you called yourself an alignment specialist. I love it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to steal that because I'm a, a law of attraction teacher. I'm a vibrational alignment specialist. Yes, you are. I just changed my name. <laughs> Sounds better than law of attraction teacher. So, um, you, and, know, you they, know, I want to say, I want to say something about people, you know, healers. Now, look, most people have really good intentions. Yes, I you, agree. You can't know what you don't know. Mm. This is years of experience I'm talking here. Do you know, I have learned a lot. Absolutely. I think you're right. And a lot of, you know, when it comes to, we were just talking about this. I was talking about this with Victor last week. You know, same thing, Victor Peruta. Most people do have good intentions and they, you know, you can't just say, well, that I had a bad experience with a psychic or I, I had a bad experience with a healer and they're all bad. You know, obviously, look, I don't believe that, but even though I had bad experiences, you know, there's bad, there's negative, um, there's in all industries, there's negative in all industries, you know, but you don't, you don't throw out the entire industry. And, and that's what the spiritual world it's the same thing. It's, you know, there's people who are healers and teachers and it's okay to get paid to be a healer or a teacher. That's, that's the only way we're going to be able to um, have the time, honestly, to have the time. There, there's definitely a, a group of spiritual people I've noticed who think, oh, you shouldn't charge for spiritual work. And it's exact opposite is it's it, it, money's an energy. It's an exchange. And, and if, if we don't take that exchange, then we're going to be doing something else where we're not even able, available to help you. <laughs> we have to be sitting in an office pushing paperwork. And money is love. You know, there's a book I just read that says money is love. And that's, that's a struggle for a lot of healers. And it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. getting a oh, I, I, and I agree. I like, cause I used to have that mindset and I had to get myself out of it as well. And now I actually help other coaches who have that same struggle and, and help them get back into the abundance mindset because we are meant to be abundant and and it's okay and and money is a tool it can be used for evil can't it like a lot of people but but you can also use money for for good and for love and the the more money i make the more i can help others kind of like helping yourself first like you said earlier it's that i'm glad you said i'm glad you brought that up because that has been a struggle for a lot of healers yes. in, our, in our community. It is. And, you know, the, the modern, the allopathic medicine, um, you know, I've been part of that for a long time. I, I pulled back away because I felt like I couldn't be all of who I was there. And I, I didn't feel integrous with the way that the insurance system works. Mm, yeah. All of that. You, you can't get everything you need in just this little time period because your insurance company tells you that's all you get. Yep. And so I suggest, speaking of money, have a fund for yourself that you take care of yourself with. You go get a massage, you go get, you know, a, a, you know, a facial, you um, take yourself to dinner, but have a fund. A self-care fund. Self-care health fund. And to come back to you, let's have a joy fund over here to the fund. Ooh, yes. Like vacations and yes. all that kind of stuff. Yep. I love it. Yeah. Cause a lot of us are, you know, people say that I don't have the money to do it, but it's really just a matter of switching your priorities around, you know, um, do you not have the money or you just would rather put it, spend it on. Cause like, especially like with me, I, I help a lot of people with addiction recovery, you know, like usually they're already decided they want to quit drinking or decided they want to quit a bad habit, or they're trying to get into a, a, a new habits, live their optimal life. Uh, but if you really, if, point out to them like, well, how much money were you spending on the alcohol, on your bad habits, on your, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Cause there's an app for that. Like a lot of people, they're spending like $20 a day, but the, you know, and that, that was no problem for decades, but, and $20 is the minimum that usually they're spending on their bad habits. And then you add that up over decades. I think you can afford a coach. Yeah. I think you can, because <laughs> you're not spending money on your bad habits. And then coaches and healers they it's it's taking a quantum leap instead of baby steps you're going to reach your goals so much fa faster if like you said earlier if you ask for help you got to ask for assistance and you're going to get there so much faster than trying to do things on your own i've hired coaches i've hired healers i mean it's wonderful every you know except for those a couple 
the the Reiki experiences. I think it's been just absolutely made me uh, catapult a lot faster than I could on my own, for sure. It's not a weakness to ask for help. It's a strength. It is a strength. And so when people come to me, I I just ask them what their goals are and I kind of tune in and help them set up a plan and about how many visits will it take? Well, that depends on you. And that's what that depends yes. on what you you do on the outs, you know, on the outside of your, you know, your lifestyle. Do you, are you going to do the exercise? You know, what, what's realistic for you? Are you going to spend 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day? I, I, I can, I can adapt that for you, mm -hmm. but you have to be realistic about what, what kind of time you want to, you want to do. And I feel like allopathic medicine doesn't give you time. So if you're going to pay for something, quote, more integrative, I, you know, we used to be called alternative. I don't like being called alternative. It's an integrated path. Then, you know, you pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, an hour of my time versus, you know, like you go to a PT and there's two or three other people there. You get five, 10, 15 minutes, maybe a half hour. If you're lucky the first time, then you're with somebody. They're setting you up and all that. I, I you know, I used to run. I have run three different PT departments in my life. And so I have, se I have seen allopathic medicine. I, I know how that works. There's a place for it. Yes, please do that. And integrate true, a true healing modality. Yes. In that. You know, meaning that um, the things that we've been talking about, there's an integrative medicine now. It used to be called, you know, holistic health and it's been called different things, but you need both. I That's mean, why I still call it holistic mind, body, spirit. Like when one yeah, thing's out of yeah. balance, you guys, if your mind's out of balance, your whole yeah. life's out of balance. If your body's out of balance, your whole, your spirit's out of balance. Guess what? You're completely out of balance. You need all three. And, and that's what holistic healing is all about. And yeah. you called it integrative. 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 I mean, I like it. It's all the, it's all the same, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same because we're all trying to get, um, like you said, it's, it's about being able to get back into balance. Absolutely. And there, I love the practical tips that you, you gave that people can incorporate right away on themselves. You know, that's so important is I think a lot of it, you know, is, you know, can even be common sense, but people don't do it. You know, a lot of times intuitively, even we know what to do. And that's why coaches are good. That's why healers are good because it's going to push you to actually start to take those steps that you know you need to do. But it's just hard to get motivated on your own sometimes. An accountability thing, you know, as much as accountability, I yeah, accountability. And as much as I love exercise, I'd much rather be with a bunch of people doing it. I, I still do it. True. I still time to go to a class because I have more fun when I'm with, with other people. If I'm going to do a yoga practice, I can be by myself. But when I'm you know, if I'm going to dance and have fun, then I want to, I want to be with others. So it's, it's good to be, you know, know when you need to be with people or when you need, you know, some quiet time as well. You know, just knowing that about yourself, I think brings that, you, you said it all, it's balance. And I know meditation and breath work are so important, so important. And I struggle to, you know, force myself to do it, you know, so some days like, okay, I'm not feeling like, my mind's going to quiet very well. So I'll do a guided meditation instead, and maybe only 10 minutes and, and be okay with that. You know, it's, you got That's, that's a huge thing is to be okay. When you aren't at your best, don't beat yourself up. It's better just to not do the meditation at all than to do it and beat yourself up about not doing it perfectly. Exactly. And I want to say that, um, I had something come to me when you were talking about that, which what if we got up every morning, looked at ourselves in the mirror and said, you know what? I love you. Yes. What body? Thank you. You're amazing. You're a miracle. And so if the body keeps hearing that every day and you can look at yourself in the mirror, no matter what, and say, you know, Vic, you're doing the best you can. You're showing up today the best you know how. That's all you got to do. And I've been definitely working on that lately because it's, you know, because sometimes we just aren't conscious of things that we're doing. And I've been struggling with autoimmune and um, a lot of it, like you said, environment, changing my diet is definitely helped improve, but there's still some issues. And it's like what I was told by like every person, every psychic person, every channeler that just talked to volunteer the information to me, my autoimmune autoimmune the spiritual reason behind it is self-rejection 
like but i'm like but i love myself more than i ever have in my entire life why would this come up in my late 40s when i finally learned to love myself well because it's a layover you know because all these and so now i'm having to go back and do that like like you said you have to like i love you i love my body i love you know you know, and just start self-love self-care all the things that you know maybe i would criticize criticize myself too much in the past and then that created this autoimmune condition and so to get rid of it you have to kind of deprogram <laughs> and recondition your mind it, and it's not overnight because if you've been talking schmack to yourself for you know 45 plus years then guess what you know you're gonna you're gonna actually it's gonna take longer than a, a few days to to correct and I want to bring up the um, sometimes and actually I, I got something for you maybe later I'll tell you but but one of the things that a download uh, yeah yeah but one of the things I have found about autoimmune is the ancestral piece mm. you know ancestral pieces can usually go back seven generations I, I did something once called it, it it does run in my family it's a so um, I knew I was trying to, it's a soul constellation work. It had another name. It was- I've heard of it. You know, a soul constellation. Mm -hmm. I've been in those. It's phenomenal because I was like somebody's great, great, great grandmother. And then I was somebody's stillborn child. And I literally couldn't move when I was in that circle. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. So what I have helped people do is try to help them disengage from the ancestral piece and do some ancestral healing. And that's a real specific way to work. Yeah. I would get, if you feel like you're working on the DNA level, you know, people like uh, uh, Joe Dispenza, you know, and other mm -hmm. people are talking about like him. healing and the solfeggio vibrational sounds. So sound, just having those, so is that how you say that, solfeggio? But it's a specific sound healing yeah. way. You know what I mean? There's like nine specific like beta things. alpha delta that and even certain hertz like four beta hertz, oh okay hertz, seven hertz mm -hmm. but, but that's all over the you know youtube and stuff you can actually put that in the background in your healing space so that there's a high vibrational music music mm -hmm. key to healing too i i love music what about a, um um the om yeah um. chanting the om a-u-m yeah all that kind of chanting, the sound, the vibration, the um, playing it in just even in the background. Mm, yeah, really, really, a simple, but it's really profound. I do that when I have when I have people on the table. I'm I'm real particular about about the music that's in the background. I used to have a symphony. The people from the symphony used to come, and they were real particular because they couldn't do anything with a melody. So that put me on a whole nother path to try to search for different sounds and vibration, nature, things that they, that would relax them. That didn't have a, a tone because musicians are real sensitive to music. I'm going to make sure I'm going to say this word right. I think it's cymatics. Yeah. Cymatic frequencies. Have you heard of cymatics? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, why does not everybody talk about that? It's amazing. But that's for another, that's for another episode. But Vicki, oh my gosh, I could talk to you for another few hours. This time has gone by so fast. We're going to have to do, I'm going to have to invite you on another episode. If you, if you'll have me, if you'll have me. I would love it. Thank you. So I'm going to put all of your information in the description box on YouTube and in the show notes, wherever I post this, as, as long as it allows me to put it there, it will be there for you to find Vicki. But go ahead in case they're on a platform where they can't see the, your biography, go ahead and tell people where they can find you. Right now I have an office in Blue Ash and I have um, Blue Ash, Ohio. This is going to be the international. Yeah, yay, Blue Ash, Ohio. <laughs> And my physical therapy practice is called Light Touch Physical Therapy. So if you go to lighttouchpt.com, that's my website. I have a phone number at my office. It's 513-792-2300. And I have a specific um, website for the book. It's called divinetrilogy.org. And I have a new website coming out I'm very excited about that's going to uh, help to... Um, 
all my offerings. So I have courses and I have yoga and I have all these retreats and things planned. So I have offerings all the time that I'm putting together because I like being creative and putting all this stuff together in a way that can help people. So that's going to be Vicki Fairchild dot com and that my name is spelled v-i-c-k-i-e f-a-i-r-c-h-i-l-d and then you can email me at vicky fairchild yoga dot com perfect um yeah and then so i guess on your website sorry go ahead oh it's vicky fairchild yoga at gmail at gmail.com okay and i'm gonna have that in the show notes too um and it sounds like on your website people will be able to maybe subscribe to an email list and then they'll get updated with events or should yes. they keep checking back? They can keep checking back on the new website, Vicki Fairchild. It'll have all of that new updated way of doing business. That's my, that's my goal is to get all updated. So you can register there and, you know. Technology, that's, that's where I get stuck. I need to hire a technology coach for sure. Well, um, Vicki, I have loved this conversation. You have been such a joy to talk to. You raised my vibration. <laughs> and um, I'm definitely going to have you back again for another episode. And we can, I don't think we'll ever run out of things to talk about. I just don't for some reason. And you guys, if for all my viewers, thank you so much for hanging in there and watching this, this episode. If you know anyone that this will help, if you know someone struggling with uh, maybe trying to heal some sort of illness, or maybe you just know someone who is really into psychics or, or, and people who can channel and, and spiritual healers and teachers, please go ahead and send them our way. Please subscribe to this community because it's our goal to raise the vibration of the planet. Just a small little goal. We, you know, we don't ask much. So go ahead and when you share this, join our community. And if you yourself ha are spiritually gifted, let me know. Let me know in the comments. You know, maybe you can be uh, one of my guests on the show. So don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to like this episode and share with your friends. And thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you.